Hi guys, um, my name's Tracy and this is a vlog for Hungry for Change and we're talking about Christmas and how we deal with it and cope with it and survive it. Um, so I'm going to tell you what I do. Um, I think the biggest shift for me in, in terms of coping with Christmas is to try not to cope with it, um, which sounds bizarre, but to, to deliberately look at the positive things in the holiday and in the positive things that I'm going to do. So instead of like freaking out about Christmas dinner and the whole day being about lunch and food, I think about um, spending time with my family and, you know, kind of um, hopefully getting people gifts that they like and watching the kids open their presents. And, you know, you know when you think about Christmas, food is such a small part of it. And obviously, you know, when you are struggling um, in recovery and you are trying to um, get well, food is such a huge deal it seems such a huge deal um but we build it up more and more so i guess for me one of my ways of coping is to not try and cope to deliberately look for all of the many many other things that christmas is about other than that bloody dinner um i also think it's it's a good idea to set limits um for me i do that with um the time that i spend at certain family members houses and um, because it's difficult for me um, so I will have an end limit. So maybe I'll get there at one and I'll leave at three. It'll be my limit and 3.30, my absolute limit. Um, and you can work out, you know, kind of your excuses before you go. You don't actually need to give one as such. You know, you have a right to choose where you do and do not go. But in the real world, you need an excuse. Um, so you can work those out before. And I think the same goes with dinner too. Um, to set yourself... Um, a goal with food and whether that's um, your issue is overeating or under eating or whatever else um, to set yourself a realistic goal um, so you know what your parents are going to serve you or your partner or your whoever is going to serve you at Christmas you know what their meals are like so for you to envisage that and, and to think about right what feels like a safer amount for me to eat and to go with that um, if you can be honest with people beforehand, do it, you know, and say, look, you know, I'm going to find it really difficult. So could you maybe just give me this amount of food or, you know, if I leave it, please don't be offended. Um, but I'm trying my hardest to get well. And, and obviously um, it takes time. Um, I think my, my final, I guess, holiday tip, and this is, you know, Christmas and right the way through, is to take time and reflect on the things that you've done that have um, brought you further forward. You know, give yourself that time to go, well, look, you know, how well have I done so far? And, you know, it might, you might think, well, I, have, I don't feel like I've moved at all. But when you look at it, if you really look at it, you have. And even if you think, well, you know, I haven't moved at all, um, you know, I'm just at the beginning of recovery, that's a huge thing, you know? The fact that you're at the beginning of recovery is the start of the end of your sickness and that's a huge thing and you know recognize those things for yourself reflect back on the things that have changed the things in your attitude that have changed in your behaviors in your goals and the way you think about things and you know give yourself a pat on the back for that you know be proud of those things and be encouraged by them and allow them to help you to set realistic um goals for 2012 um because, you know, you are capable of these things and you will have moved forward. It's just taking the time to remember that and um, using that to empower yourself. So I'm going to sign off. I'm going to wish you guys a Merry Christmas because you do deserve a Merry Christmas. And um, be safe, uh, enjoy and uh, be good to you. Thanks for watching. Bye.